Tonight, Facebook doubles down on video. Father Robert Balasar plays with augmented reality live from CES and learn why super cookies are really not as good as they sound. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 249 for Thursday, January 8th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Invest in yourself for 2015 with lynda.com. It has thousands of courses to help you learn new tech, business, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN and the number two. Oh, hello. Hi, I'm Sarah Lane. Let's get right into the tech feed, shall we? Facebook has announced today that it's acquired video compression company Quickfire Networks, which is based in San Diego, California. Quickfire converts video formats so that they can be downloaded with less bandwidth and no loss in video quality. Quickfire CEO Craig Lee wrote on the company's website, quote, Facebook has more than 1 billion video views on average every day, and we're thrilled to help deliver high-quality video experiences to all the people who consume video on Facebook. Terms of the deal were not disclosed. But speaking of video and speaking of Facebook, Facebook writes on its media blog today that video posts per person have increased 75% worldwide and 94% in the United States since last year. Analytics company Social Bakers puts Facebook's numbers ahead of even YouTube's for official accounts anyway, with brands posting 20,000 more videos on Facebook than YouTube and no one wanting them there. Google dominates the search market and has since the dawn of man, but in the U.S. at least, the company's share dropped last month to 75.2% from 79.3% a year ago. Meanwhile, guess who's catching up? Well, they have a long way to go, but Yahoo jumped from 10.4% from 7, jumped to rather 10.4% from 7.4%. This is according to analytics firm StatCounter. So this is Google's smallest share of the U.S. web search market since at least 2008 when StatCounter started tracking these numbers, and it's the highest share for Yahoo since 2009. It's a slow shift, but there is a bit of a shift. Yahoo did replace Google as the default search engine on Firefox browsers in the U.S. back in November, which obviously moved some numbers in Yahoo's favor. StatCounter says that Firefox users represented a little over 12% of U.S. internet usage in December. Let's go to Capitol Hill, shall we? The Hill, the website, reports that U.S. representative, who has the best name in the world, Dutch Ruppersberger, who's on the House Intelligence Committee, I just love him already, will reintroduce the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act, also known as CISPA, and also very controversial, tomorrow. The bill is designed to help the public and private sectors share information about cybersecurity threats. Advocates say that the U.S. can't defend critical infrastructure without CISPA, but privacy advocates worry that it'll mean more collection of American citizens' private information. The House actually passed the CISPA bill last year, but it stalled in the Senate, so it's back. At least, you know, it's trying. Okay, let's go to CES, shall we? Father Robert Balser has actually been with us all week, uh, live on the CES floor. He's, he's taking it all in, and man, you look good. Epson has been nice enough to lend us their booth. So right behind us is their display case for their Muverio augmented reality glasses. And I got to tell you, they, they just made a splash. Uh, okay, well, you look great. They're obviously very fashionable, but... What do you are you seeing? What are you seeing right now? What's going on? Are you having like a really out of body augmented reality experience while we're doing the show? Tell me, what's what's new? Absolutely. Now, now let me tell you that the dorky look is mostly because of my headphones. It's not of the glasses. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's a lot of light, so I had to put on my uh, Audio Technica headphones. But right now, through these glasses, what I'm doing is I'm seeing an overlay of the real world. The way that these glasses work is that there can be RF tags or QR codes. And like, for example, on that wall, I see a menu of different items that I can select to make the uh, Epson website do things. And then I can just use the control in my pocket to select them. Uh, it's, it's a very nice way of doing not virtual reality, but augmented reality. Wow. Now, QR codes, uh, they've, QR codes are kind of, you know. We, we've all been sort of waiting for them to become extremely helpful and not just these weird things that are posted over everything. Can you see the QR code when you're wearing the glasses or it, that that's what is replaced by this menu uh, in Epson's example? 
Well, that, yeah, that's what gets replaced. So like as I walk back past a wall and let's say it's got a, a QR code and I, I focus on it, it will automatically bring up the information associated with that QR code. Same thing if I've got a tag. If I've got a radio tag, uh, I could, for example, go into a server room and the glasses will overlay the names of all the servers and what they do so that I don't have to walk around with a clipboard. Uh -huh. Or let's say I'm an airplane mechanic. I could look at an aircraft engine and it will give me an overlay of all the parts in that engine. It's a fantastic system. You know, you think of Epson, or I do anyway, as printers. You know, I, I wouldn't necessarily put Epson as like the VR company. I can't imagine that they're the only ones at CES who are showing off some form of augmented reality because we keep hearing about these you know, VR headsets and, and it seems like 2015 is going to be a big year for them. Well, there are a couple of companies that are trying to do something like this, but most of them fall into virtual reality. Oculus or OpenVR close you off and they show you a virtual world. This is what Google Glass wanted to be, a way to overlay a virtual world on the real world. And I, I want to show you something, Sarah. This is a company called Lightshot that is trying to give you a uh, overlay augmented reality game. So this <laughs> is actually a <laughs> wand. And I can have duels it's with like other players, and I see what my wand does okay. as I use it. What in the world? No, you got to explain that to me again. What does the... You have to wave the wand in order to see things? Right, so this <laughs> wand is connected to the uh, to the Moverio. I actually have to do the right spell. It's oh, just like Harry right. Potter. If I don't do it correctly, mm -hmm. it doesn't activate the spell. Yeah, that sounds very convenient and perfect for my life. You know, somebody on Twitter, I think it was Danny Sullivan, said uh, earlier this week, I haven't seen anybody at CES, zero people wearing Google Glass. Now, you mentioned Google Glass, and Google Glass, perhaps it's just a little bit before its time. There were obviously jokes about it not being, uh, you know, stylish enough to be to be worn. But but as you're saying, there are solutions. You, you mentioned the, you know, the pilot and, and engines, and it seems like on an assembly line and that sort of thing, almost in the enterprise, there's really a lot of potential for augmented reality. It's not just about you know, being in a game or, or taking photos of what's around you. Exactly, that's what Epson figured out. Right now, they're offering these developer kits for about $500. They're trying to bring people in, and they've got a contest running where you could win $10,000 by designing the best apps. They want to create an ecosystem, unlike what Google did, where they gave you hardware and then you didn't really have much to do with it. Yeah, exactly. So what if I, if you're sold on these Epson uh, uh, reality glasses, what are they going to run you? Are they available? Oh, they are available right now, but this is the dev kit. So you can buy the dev kit just like you would with the original Oculus or the original Google Glass. Uh, this is gonna run you 699, but they've got 200 off. They're really trying to push this into the hands of developers. And uh, some of the applications that I've seen here, like for example, they have a quadcopter that you can, can, you can see what the FPV is through here. So it doesn't close you off from the world, but you can see what your quadcopter is seeing. It's applications like that that I think are going to drive this ecosystem. You're, you basically just explained how we can fly without actually flying. Yes. Which is pretty much we everyone's dream. So that, I'm okay, that sounds pretty good. $6.99 you say, I'm sold. Father Robert Balasser is uh, has been at CES all week, hanging out on the show floor and bringing us very interesting technology, showing it off anyway. He's the host of This Week in Enterprise Tech and Coding 101 and Know How and Prod Race Corner here on the Twit Network. He's a very busy man, but thanks for taking a little time, uh, three shows in a row, to, uh, to be with us on TN2. Thanks, Padre. Coming up, Apple is reporting record earnings, but not really in the way that you think they will. We'll explain in a minute. And how to protect yourself from super cookies because they're dangerous. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. lynda.com is used by millions of people all over the world with 4,500 courses on all sorts of topics. Maybe you're interested in photography. Maybe you just never thought you were really, you know, knew your way around a camera or web development or some sort of a business training, software training, WordPress, Excel, Photoshop, the list goes on. You might have a plan for 2015 that 
you, you want to learn a new skill. You want to you want to get a job promotion, and you need to know certain things that you think you might need to brush up on or never knew in the first place. Maybe you're marketing yourself for a new business. Lynda.com courses like blogging for your business or SEO fundamentals, top 10 social media management tools, that's all at your fingertips. Now, you might have just a few minutes. Maybe you've got all sorts of time to, to absorb these courses, but each course is structured so you can kind of come and go. You can learn at your own pace. The courses are taught by experts. They're professionals. They're at the top of their field. These are people who know what they're talking about. And you want to do something good for yourself, right? It's fun to learn new things. Knowledge is power. 2015 is a new year, everybody. You can sign up for a free 10-day trial to lynda.com. 10 days with full access by visiting lynda.com slash t. N2. Every course on lynda.com, including access via your iOS or your Android device. If you're on the go and you want to you wanna learn d during your commute, not while you're driving, of course, but you know, maybe you're on a train. New courses are also added each week as well. If you want to take advantage of 10 days for free, go to lynda.com slash TN2, completely free for 10 days. We're challenging you to learn something new in 2015. And thanks to lynda.com for sponsoring this episode of TN2. Okay, on to a few more stories that we're following today. It's a really good time to be an app developer, uh, certainly if you're developing for iOS, because Apple has announced some kind of crazy numbers in the job growth arena. The company says that it's created or supported 1.03 million jobs in the U.S. alone. Now, you might be saying, well, how is that? possible because of all the people that make apps for iOS. Specifically, Apple says that it helped create over 627,000 U.S. jobs with 334,000 jobs created from spending and growth, plus Apple's own 66,000 employees who work in the U.S. alone. Apple also says that revenue generated through its app store rose 50% to a record in 2014, and it tells Bloomberg that apps generated more than $10 billion in revenue for developers last year. Recode is reporting that Twitter is going to introduce a new video product in the next few weeks, citing sources familiar with the company's plans that are anonymous, of course. The feature is said to let users shoot and then edit and then post video directly through Twitter's app, which would probably mean more video on the service and more engagement with those videos. Currently, Twitter users can only share video directly via Vine, that's Twitter's standalone video app. But the new video feature reportedly will have a time limit sort of similar to Vine, which loops six second videos over and over. Recode sources say that Twitter has experimented with up to 20 second time limits on the new video product. Back in November, Twitter told investors that it was working on a native video tool for its users that would launch in the first half of 2015. Okay, let's talk about super cookies. Do you browse in private mode or incognito in order to go about your internet business without being tracked? A lot of people do. But Sam Greenhall, who's a technology and software consultant who operates Radical Research, says that websites have the capability to bypass those privacy modes if users aren't paying enough attention because of something called HTTP Strict Transport Security, or HSTS, which websites use to make sure users are only pulling data from their servers when using secure HTTPS connections. Okay, so Greenhall calls his proof of contact concept HSTS Super Cookies. Once they're set, with the right browser and the right platform, the cookies will be visible even if a user switches to incognito browsing. And the super cookies can be read by websites from multiple domain names, not just the one originally identified uh, that I had identified the users. So you might say, well, how do I get around these? These sound terrible. The latest version of Firefox does not allow super cookies set in regular mode to continue to, uh, to live in private mode. Ars Technica notes that Chrome on Windows is vulnerable, along with Chrome and Safari running on an iPad. But Internet Explorer isn't vulnerable because currently supported versions of the browser don't support HSTS. Did you follow that? Super cookies. Protect yourself. All right, now let me practice my Swiss French for a second. Researchers at the École Polytechnique Fédérale in Lausanne, Switzerland, have designed a soft, flexible electronic implant, which they say can bend and stretch like dura mater, which is the membrane that surrounds the brain and the spinal cord. Now, the researchers in the past showed that implants can allow mice with spinal injuries to walk again by sending patterns of electrical shocks to the spinal cord via electrodes placed inside the spine. Originally, though, the wires ended up damaging the mice's nervous systems. Poor little guys. The new improved implant is called Edura, made from soft silicone and gold wires that stretch and electrodes made of rubber and platinum, along with a microchannel for drug infusion. 
obviously the idea here is that with this technology down the road, probably somewhat far down the road, an implant could restore a paralyzed person's ability to walk. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And of course, you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. You know what I'm going to say next, but I'm going to say it again. Tech News Today is tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. It's our morning news show, and we hope you'll watch both. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.